Uh, that's a good question, <laughs> isn't it? Um, ladies and gentlemen, dear chairman, it's a uh, um, thank you to uh, Sages. It's actually a pleasure uh, being invited uh, to talk about uh, uh, Do You Remember Notes? And uh, I think you can clearly see what's going to happen now, right? Is, uh, is notes dead is another way, right? That's uh, why you say, do you remember notes? And I want to uh, go back a little bit and spend some time with you about notes, what's coming out and uh, where we are today. Um, Anthony Kalou is uh, the one that's the modern era of notes um, described um, for us in the early 2000s. He published a paper in 2004 here at uh, um, Sages uh, uh, 12 years ago talking about it. What really um, decided for, um, so what was that? Well, it was not too bad, whatever, it's an abstract, right, presented at Sages. Um, well, what happened, uh, he talked about the uh, advantages uh, which we presume may still be true today. Um, there's uh, no or many minimal pain, no scars, uh, uh, no wound infection, uh, not even hernias, uh, and possibly no adhesions, and outpatient should be a lot faster. Well, I'm not going to show you the video because uh, 10 minutes time is uh, relatively short, uh, but uh, most of you who remember this video is the first human transgastric appendectomy by Drs. Rao and Reddy from India. Uh, what happened here in the U.S., ASGE and SAGES came together and formed the NOSCAR, N-O-S-C-A-R, Assessment and Research. He published a white paper in 2006. It uh, basically told us how we should uh, proceed forward with doing research appropriately in the right steps um, so that we all adhere in and uh, not doing uh, uh, basically um, new modern uh, patient, uh, um, uh, well, um, repeating history and uh, working on uh, using uh, patients as guinea pigs. What happened at the same time in the literature? Well, there was nothing out there before Kalu in 2004, and over the next three years, it exploded the literature, and I didn't go any further. So there was a clear interest about notes. Well, at some point, somebody came up, well, we're only talking about transgastric. Well, what about other natural orifices? Transvaginal, transcolonic, transvesical, transesophageal. You know, um, keep an open mind. We heard about the magnetic uh, connections before uh, with, the, um, trans, uh, with the EGD as well as the colonoscopy. Um, so mm, the fusion notes was talked about. Uh, you can imagine it's uh, a widespread at that time. 2007, it really got uh, uh, wild here and um, around the world. Jack Marosco in April 2nd in 07 described a transvaginal cholecystectomy. Well, the same thing here happened uh, just two weeks before that. Uh, uh, Mark Bessler in, uh, in uh, New York City described a transvaginal cholecystectomy. Well, then we started thinking, looking at the literature, and realized, well, wait a moment. There's other people in German, Carsten Sonic, um, uh, told us in a paper about transvaginal specimen retrievals in 1992. Um, so we realized, well, maybe the evolution of uh, notes is not just what happened over the last 10 years or 10 years ago, uh, what's going in there. So what it all has in common, we go through the um, um, go through the posterior fornix and do whatever surgery it is, whether it's transvaginal appendectomy, gallbladder. There's some old and new published papers uh, coming out from last, latest in Switzerland about transvaginal hernia repairs um, as well. Well, uh, we came up uh, with the safer technique of doing those with triangle of safeties, going through the posterior fornix um, to allow um, safer entry in the abdomen. We realized pure nodes might not be the way doing it. It should be a hybrid nodes with a visualization uh, from the umbilicus, as you can see here, where we should gain access uh, through the vagina um, to go intra-abdominal. Um, intra um, but all these things were obviously masked with the hype um, on uh, um, the media. The media went through this uh, like crazy. Are we doing new surgery, next big things, natural orifices, tongue wagging, and, uh, and so forth. Um, what came up is a randomized trial started uh, throughout the uh, US, uh, not around the world. The first one uh, was uh, from Spain. Um, in short, they really didn't show much of a pain difference, what we anticipated. Um, but the surgery, there was only 20 people in each, uh, 20 patients in each arm, but they were relatively um, short-lived uh, pain. The next paper came out from Germany. What they saw also 
Um, OR time was pretty similar, but they saw not much statistical significance between pain difference. They also had only uh, had uh, not many people uh, in the study, but what they found, if you take a look at these two curves, the red curve um, below um, is the one with the transvaginal group, the blue one is the laparoscopic group. So the first seven days, they saw some pain difference, but the numbers were too small. Um, so and as a third trial here, the second germal trial, actually found a significant difference uh, um, between pain and uh, all the complications uh, were quite uh, quite similar. There's really uh, um, not many uh, complications described other than what is consistent with the laparoscopic complication rate. If you take a look at the NOSCAR trial, that's number trial number four and the first trial in the US, it's actually amazing how this all came together uh, with Robert Haas and uh, Steven Schweitzberg and all the others. Uh, being able to get a uh, no scar between SAGES and ASGE, again, to sponsor a, a multicenter trial. The trial is now closed. Um, it's in the evaluating. We have some data back. I haven't seen the final data. But uh, um, I, and it has not been, uh, has not been uh, with a statistician. But if you take a look at this really red box, there's a difference. Um, there's less pain described by patients uh, with the transvaginal cholecystectomy approach. Um, but, uh, um, you know, I'm going to question whether we're going to be statistically significant with that or not. It's a relatively small difference, but there's clearly a difference there. Um, that's a reminder, no scar uh, for everybody is going to be in July and we're going to talk a lot about new exciting tech, uh, technologies and techniques, what we also did earlier today. So, so just a reminder uh, to see that. Um, everything's very specific. Uh, we're in the U.S., so U.S. heavy. Um, many centers throughout the country. Um, these are the only the ones that done some transvaginal work here in the U.S. Um, looking around the world, and I picked Germany here because that's the most accurate data we actually have available. That's the Acre Institute. It's basically a NISQIP database, but instead of having only a part of these surgeries involved, it has all the laparoscopic cholecystectomy that have been uh, performed in Germany. The data I have here is uh, from 2013 and 2012. Um, you see, if you take a look at the red circles, about a thousand uh, transvaginal cholecystectomy have been performed in 2012, in 13, 840. And then I saw the 2014 numbers, there were around 700. That, if you calculate it back uh, with about 100,000 females, uh, it comes back to uh, somewhere between half a percent to one percent in Germany right now is uh, getting uh, operated on for the gallbladder disease with a transvaginal cholecystectomy. Um, going back to all of this, where we're coming from, right? We're talking about nodes, revolution, evolution. I think it's an evolution or oh, a laparoscopic revolution, and uh, it might be too small to read, uh, but we're going back to an evaluation of the cervix, then up endoscopy, um, Dr. Ponsky with his PEC tube in the uh, 1980, coldoscopy, describing transvaginal evaluation, transvaginal hydrolaparoscopy, and the parallel peritoneoscopy, or Col Anthony Callot. So notes in itself, uh, seems uh, more like a galaxy to me, like a big galaxy, and we have one of them is transvaginal cholecystectomy, what some people say this is notes, but no, I don't think so. I think there is poem. We talked about this earlier in this session today. We talked about other technologies. Uh, one of them we haven't talked about is transanal, but you heard it all over the place. It's being performed. It's not just transanal specimen extraction, but it is. Uh, transanal um, surgery. This is this is notes, and uh, you heard um, as well in the same session. We haven't talked about endoscopic mucosal resection, bariatric surgeries. We talked about endoscopic reflex procedures. Um, these are all notes. So we are in the galaxy. It's not just transvaginal cholecystectomy, but I think it's almost more a marker of where we are uh, today. And uh, appendiceal stents, I've seen some videos of those for treating appendicitis, um, gallbladder stents, uh, you know, the treating cholecystitis with a stent going from the gallbladder into duodenum. Uh, it's quite a world and this is all natural or surgery really what we'll, uh, what we're doing today. So from my perspective, uh, we need to continue exploring um, the galaxies and uh, we are surgeons and uh, we have a final frontier. You know, we need to explore on strange new techniques uh, if you want to talk, uh, if you want to say it like this. 
So from my perspective, um, yes, I do remember notes, and I think we are actually practicing. Uh, many people, as we saw, everybody who's speaking here today is practicing notes in a certain way. And as you see here, notes for me is a, a life in kicking. Thank you very much.